What is a real man? What constitutes being a man that people look up to, your family, spouse, kids, and society in general, all of your family, friends, and relatives? What constitute, what makes up a real man that has strength, sensitivity, longevity, and stability? Well, I'm discovering what that's all about as I grow and go. We're, not one of us is perfect, not one of us uh, has a life that is flawless. We all have our flaws. But one thing I do know about a man, since I am one, is that in inside of every man, I believe, is some sort of adventure. Wild at heart. Uh, John Eldridge wrote a book about that. So there's some truth to that. But I also believe that that wild at heartness or the adventurous heart is one that can multiply into many different things. It doesn't have to just be a you know, getting greasy and dirty and going out and doing something that makes you sweat and you get hurt doing it. And then, uh, you know, you you show off your scars to everybody. Now, in today's society, that may be some of it for some men, but for other men, it may be new technology and getting lost within the screen of a computer or the screen of a gadget. Another For another man, it may mean just getting lost, sitting in nothingness, staring out into the uh, wide open space and, and you know, getting lost into his, his nothing box, which every man has within his mind. Women, I know, don't get jealous. You don't have one. You have multiple screens. We just have one screen. And uh, we X out of that and pull up another one where you can toggle between 15 to 20. I know, I know. So if anybody should be getting uh, jealous, then it should be us with your multitasking. <laughs> anyway, men have this sense of adventure at all in all different arenas. And it just depends on the taste of the, the man and what he likes, what he enjoys doing. But society is changing as a whole. We don't have a lot of society that says, you know, this is this is what a man is and this is what a man should do and this is what a man should be and what a man should look like. That is fast changing in this generation. You know, it used to be the John Wayne, the tough guy. Don't ever cry, get cut up, scarred up and uh, show off your wounds to everybody and then the, the wife or the children go, oh, wow, look at that. You're so tough. You're such a strong guy and man, I wish I could be as brave and as tough as you are. And, you know, that that is changing. And not to say that there's, there's an element of strength there, but it doesn't mean that it has to be physical. It can all be inner strength, and that's really what the kingdom of God is about inside of a man, is the strength of a man, yet the sensitivity of a man, and to be all things to all people within his family. Sometimes you might have to be Mr. Mom if mom is, you know, working nowadays or she's out shopping or she's out with the girlfriends or what have you and the baby needs changing. Well, a lot of men today know how to do that whereas in the John Wayne generation they never touched one so they don't have a clue. But I want to really focus in on the chasm that's that's really taken place over the last 20 years or so. There's been a huge divide with men leaving the homes by the droves, abandoning their families like crazy, checking out because they want some sort of adventure or they're just sick of the nagging or they're just, they can't take the pressure or everything in between. And so they just take off and they're never to be seen from again or they take off with another woman because they can't control the urge for adventure in many different forms and I always like to say there's a hunt in every man and that hunt can be a good one or it can be a devastating one we all have like the scope 
hunting rifle scope, gun, you know, gun scope within us that's always hunting for something, whether it's success, a thrill, adventure, um, something that, that keeps us away from the boredom and keeps us away from the ultimate stability and responsibility. Now, that may not be the, the case for every man as far as, you know, wanting to move away from or, or, or abandon their responsibility. But there's something within each man that, if allowed, can walk away from that pretty easily because of the hunt within them. And then we, we just don't have a clue sometimes. We just plow right on through and then all the warning signs are going off the warning bells or the red light on the dash around us by way of our family, our spouse, our friends, and we just keep plowing on through and we don't pay attention to it. And then we kind of go, huh? Uh, what was that? Why am I bleeding? Why am I, why am I uh, wounded and, and bones are broken and uh, relationships torn up? What, what happened here? Well, it's because we get this thing called ego fueling our tank mixed with the adventure and man it can be volatile it can be like dynamite and everything blow up in our face so what this world is looking for and what your family is looking for what my family what what society is looking for is the stable man that can have fun with his family and friends without abandoning them and is a man of stability in the sense that he can find everything he needs close to home. And that takes self-control and discipline. No matter what is going on within the home, no matter how bad it gets, no matter how many times you get your rear end nagged upon, and no matter how frustrated you get because of the money thing and the job thing and the rest, there's, there's something so powerful and something that the Lord begins to engage in with us as men when we stand our ground and we say, no, I need to be the pillar. I need to be the foundation. I need to be the strength in human form to my family. God has hardwired us for that, whether you think so or not, whether we believe it or not. God has hardwired us to be a foundational structure, peace, in that family. If you don't believe me, look at any boy or girl that's missing a father and they will search for them the rest of their lives. It's a mad search and they will not rest. They will not relent until they find their father if their father has left them at a young age. Or they will want to know why. Why did you? Why did you leave us? Why did you abuse us? Why did you treat us that way? Why, why, why? There's always this this hunger and this void when a when a man abandons the home. And so I know I've I've uh, been there, done that with my own son because of the relationship situation that was going on. I'm not blaming anybody. Only person I can look at is myself. At a young age, I was in the military and I had my son Devin and I was 17 years old, didn't really find the, the good work that I wanted to in a small town, so I went into the military. And, you know, at that age, you're not very mature, at least I wasn't, and so I was in party mode, and uh, just went in the military thinking that was going to solve all my problems. Well, little did I know, it just made things worse. And my son was without a father for many years. While I was in the military and struggling and wrestling with that relationship with his mom, and uh, since then it's been it's been healed and mended, but there's always going to be a part of my son where he had that void uh, within his heart, and I didn't want to do that to him. I didn't mean to do that to him. It just happened, and it wasn't like I set out to to abandon him. And I don't think that's the case for most men. They don't set out to say, look, I am going to leave this family and I don't give a rip what they think or what they feel or what they say. Now, some men might if they're just totally gone in their minds, but most men, I think they just, there's something within them 
that doesn't know how to cope or handle with the situa- handle the situation in the in the right way and so they find all of these substitutes to try and fill that void and take the place and say well you know what they'll get over it one day and what's it going to hurt if i leave them for a while what's it going to hurt if if uh they don't see their dad for a few years or 20 years or whatever they're thinking but the reality is and statistics show it that it causes a huge void within the child's life and the wife's life or the family's life because the man was ordained by God to be in that family to receive guidance from the Lord, receive safety, receive strength from the Lord so that they can give it to their family. Men are built differently than women. We know that. (laughs) inside and out but a man is built to be a strength and a pillar for that family when things go rough and things go sideways and so what do we do okay what do we do as men to step to the plate and say okay my work may be messed up right now I'm still trying to figure that out money's not coming in I've got the wife nagging at me the children are begging for things And I don't know how much more I can handle. Well, the first thing to do is to stop for a moment right where you're at and not run. Have to kill the running spirit first and foremost so that we don't run off into the woods and become Rambo overnight and think that everything's going to be fine back home. It just doesn't work that way. They need to see Someone standing their ground, regardless if you're screwing up and messing up and saying the wrong things and frustrated and angry, a father that's present is better than one that's not there at all because it creates such a huge void in the heart of the child. Now, you may be thinking, well, my dad is so abusive. I don't want him around. He treated us like garbage and I, I'm so glad he's gone. I'm so glad he's out of here. Well, if he's abusive and he's been abusive, that's one thing where there may need to be some time of separation so that everybody can be safe. But I guarantee you there's still a hole and a void within the person saying that because the dad is that spiritual figure that that represents really God, the father, male figure. A lot of children look up to a man as God, like they are God-like. Uh, and with all their flaws, they still look to him as, wow, you know, I look up to you. you you're this strength and this man and this uh, person that, that I really want to be like, to emulate. That's why we call him daddy's girl and uh, like father, like son. And, and we have all of these sayings that talk about the dad. And so you're kidding yourself if you think that you're okay without your dad ultimately. Maybe your dad has passed on. I don't know. And, and uh, you, you have to grapple with that. Maybe there were some unresolved issues. But you know what? There's no condemnation. The Lord is there to heal. And he'll take care of that over time. But I'm really addressing the people right now, and the men especially, that have a choice to make. And that choice is to stop for a moment and don't run. Just call upon the Lord in truth and sincerity. Get real honest about your feelings. Get real honest about what you're going through mentally right now. And I would find someone you can confide in and you can trust. Start talking. Regardless of whether you think you can or not, it's good to talk it out. (laughs) If you don't talk, then things get bottled up and then you wind up tormenting yourself and everyone else around you if you do not communicate. One of the things I always tell everybody that happened to me when I got married uh, was a woman that we knew got in her face gently and kindly and said, look, there's three words I want to tell you. What you need to do is communicate, 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 and that is the foundation for your marriage. And it's so important for a guy when a woman has so many more hundreds of words than a man does in their vocabulary, it doesn't matter. Force yourself to talk it out with somebody. If you can't talk it out with your your spouse, 
talk it out with somebody that you can trust, a best friend, somebody that will honestly hear you out and give you an honest feedback. If it has to be your, you know, a pastor, a mentor, a leader, somebody that you feel that you can trust. That's the second thing. Don't run. Talk it out. Third is discover what it is and why it is you are here on this planet so that you can eradicate the frustration and the depression and oppression because that's a lot of the reason why a man checks out. He's frustrated about his work. He just lost his job. He can't make enough money. He feels like he's worthless and less than a man because he can't provide for his family. And so he allows the lie from the pit of hell to come in and take him out of the scene, take him out of the family, take him out of his environment and to check out. And that is not the plan of God. The plan of God is, okay, look, Adam, going all the way back to the garden, Adam, what I'm going to do after I form you out of the dust of the earth is I'm going to breathe love and life into you. You're going to know what intimacy is with me because you're, we're face to face. Okay, so he breathes him into the earth. He becomes a living being. And then he takes Adam. He physically takes him and places him in his line of work. The very next thing forms him, there's intimacy, they're close, boom, takes him right out and translates him right into the garden where he cultivates and keeps it. He becomes a gardener. That was his assignment. That was his life's work. That was his job. To multiply came afterwards. First, it was to put his hands to the work. Then he got the wife. Then he multiplied and filled the earth. There's a sequence of events that happened where you're thinking, well, that's great for Adam, but I just lost my job. Well, that's just it. Let me ask you, was it a job or was it your life's vocation? Was it your God calling? Was it your God assignment? That's what you have to really, truly, honestly ask yourself. Are you just good at something? Are you good at construction or computer work or office or whatever you do? Or are you called to do that specific thing? And that's why I'm saying, stop, don't run, talk about the problems and things with somebody you can confide in, ask the Lord what it is that your life's assignment is all about. Show me a glimpse, Father. Show me something that will give me a clue or a sign that to where I can, to where I can engage in. And then you want to ask those close to you, what do you feel that it is? I can't really see clear right now. I'm, I'm a little bit confused and I'm angry or, or whatever it is that you're going through. And so, and so you're asking those around you to help you out. And that's another thing that's difficult for a man is to ask for help. Don't ever be concerned or afraid to ask for help. That's just ego saying, don't ask. We need to take ego and put it in the back seat and let our spirit lead. Okay, so... You ask those close to you, what do you, what do you feel that you think I, I am called to? Not a job, but what do you feel that you think I'm called? What do you think my life's work is? What are my gifts? What are my talents and abilities? What do you see in me? See, because a lot of times we have blind spots when it's just us in the mirror. And so when we ask those around us, they can give us clues as to what it may be. Okay. Once you discover the it thing, the, the thing that you were born and destined to do, then most of that confusion and chaos and depression and oppression will leave. Guaranteed. Whether you're making a dime or not, the money will come when you engage in your alignment for your assignment. That The money will come. It just does because things are in order. The things are in alignment. And then you begin to come alive. All right, and, 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 and if we, we begin right there and start doing those things, then we're going to be happier for our spouse. We're going to be more pleasant to be around. Our kids are going to love us. Uh, we're going to be the stability in our home and on down the line. Now, I just hear the question in my spirit going off saying, well, how can I make money at that? Yeah, I love to golf. I love to fish. You know, everybody says I'm good at it, and uh, it's the only thing I can think about day and night. 
And, uh, you know, how am I, how's that going to pay the bills, brother? Well, <laughs> this is where creativity comes in from the spirit realm. Doing something out of the ordinary and totally unique to your personality and unique, uh, set apart from everybody else and what they're doing. You don't just want to go with the flow and say, okay, well, I'm going to sell some fishing poles. That's a love to fish. No. Uh, if you, if you, all you can do is dream about fishing poles and everyone around you is saying, yeah, you are a great fishing pole guy and I saw you make one in the garage one day and man, it was fabulous. And, and you you keep hearing that over and over and you dream about it. It's all you can think about is making fishing poles. Well, then you're going to have to come up with something and the Lord will help you totally unique and separate and different so that it will sell like crazy. And then you get creative with marketing. You find somebody that you don't know anything about marketing, then find somebody that does. I guarantee you in your circle, somebody knows something about marketing, even if it's Craigslist. Okay, and then you begin to surround yourself around that and keep listening for the ideas from your father who loves you. And that's how it works. But when you go into it and you say, well, there ain't no jobs in the fishing industry, uh, forget it. I'm going to go uh, find, a, find a job down at the uh, local watering hole. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go down to, to uh, find a job at the, at the restaurant and, uh, you know, just kind of settle down there. Well, if you have that mindset and that's all you do, you just sit down and don't try, then that's what you're going to end up with. But see, when we engage and we align, when we align, then we sign the checks. The checks start rolling in, but it's it's aligning ourselves with our eternal destiny. And, and I guarantee you, somebody around you is going to know what that is if you can't see it clearly. All you need to do is look deep within and say, look, what am I really good at? What do I love doing where I could do it without even making a dime and I'd be totally happy? Um, and what does everybody else around you say it is? What do they think it is? Every single person has that within them. The problem is, is that we just get junk piled on top of our uh, clarity and that's all we can see is the junk. So... A man in today's world needs to be with their family and full of joy and stable and a strength and a pillar. And the only way that can really happen is because it is with men is it directly related, related with their work. Because a lot of what we identify with is wrapped around our work. If you see any guys standing around talking, the first thing they do when they approach each other is, hey, uh, what do you do for work? Or how was work today? Uh, how's the job going? It, it, I guarantee you somewhere around that conversation within the first 15 minutes, one of those things is going to come up. Something having to do with work. Why is that? Well, it's because you go all the way back to the beginning and that has been put into man to provide, to, to put his hands to the plow, to engage into his life's work. And it's important to God. If it's important to you, it's important to God. And he will work it out. But you can't run anymore. And I'm really speaking to somebody specifically. Don't run. It's not worth it. Stop where you are. And to rediscover, once again, the love and the passion you had for Christ. And rediscover and, and find out that God has been speaking to you all along about what you've been destined for. Somehow it just got all clouded up. Somehow it just, the chaos came because of life. And don't blame yourself. Don't blame anybody else. Just stop where you're at and say, look, Lord... I want to start again. And I guarantee you, if you honestly 
humble yourself that way, then he will give another chance and your family will give you another chance. If in fact you engage and you have some stability and they see some longevity in you. That men are more important than this society and this world even acknowledges or realizes. You know, I know the news downplays a man's role. In fact, they make him look quite stupid in the commercials, always making the guy look like the dummy and the woman looking like the smart one. Well, women are smart, but men are too. And the enemy would like nothing more than to castrate the men spiritually and in their mind and mentally to the point to where they just check out. And that's what's been happening for years and years. And so there's these huge voids in family life. And so the children don't know which way to turn. Yeah, the moms are doing the best they can, but there's something again about a dad in that home. So just know that God is for you. God is, is waiting for you to call upon him in truth and honesty. And maybe you have been. Well, then patience is in order. Patience as you put your hand to that which you love. Do it slowly. Do it in, in the off hours. If you have a job that you can't stand and it's just paying the bills, then that's honorable right now. But put your hand to that that you're passionate about, that you feel that you're, is your life's assignment. Put your hand to that even if it's an hour a day. And sure enough, if you keep up with it, something will break loose and break forth. I love to speak, as you may well know. And so what do I do? What did I do for a long time and still doing is I record messages. I record what comes up in my heart. I give out what I feel God is, is, share, is sharing with me to share with you. And I record it and put it out there. And I'll continue to do so because I love doing it. I enjoy doing it. It's my call. And, you know, there's not many jobs that pay you that well to speak. But it doesn't matter. It does not matter. I, You know, when I engage in my gift, then things happen. Money starts coming. Provisions there. And people start surrounding and they benefit by it. Now, the same with writing. Now, if I didn't do either, then there would be a void in the earth according to that which I have to contribute. And it's the same with you. It's not fair to me or anyone else that you check out as a man and you don't engage in what God has ordained for you. Or at least put your hand to it so that we can see the end result at some point before you check out ultimately and go to the grave right so don't ever think that what you have is that insignificant no it's quite the contrary it's significant you're valuable regardless of what your spouse has told you regardless of what your ex has told you regardless of what anybody around you has told you you are priceless and you have value as a man more than you realize God wants you to know that he is for you and that the mistakes that you've made, he's like, what mistakes? Where are they? They're under the blood. They're in the past. I want you to pick up your new nature and how I see you. I see you as a whole man. And I want you to go forth in my power and my wisdom, my strength, my ideas, and my lead. And tell ego to take a seat. And stand up in your spirit and move forward and move out on what God is showing you. Well, what, 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 how do I know what God's showing me? But, you know, I can't hear his voice. I'm all confused. Again, stop for a moment. Silence yourself for a while. And if you still can't hear it, then ask those that are closest to you some ideas. Ask them, hey, what do you think I'm good at? Hey, do you have any uh, connections in this area? Hey, uh, you know, I'm going to start doing this one hour a day. Just please give me that time to do that. Okay, children, give me the time. I need just one hour and, I, and, I'll, and I'll be with you the rest of the time. I'll spend some time with you, but I need that one hour to work on this project or whatever it is. There's ways to go about it, and it's called communication. But if you don't communicate, guess what? People are left with questions. People are left wondering in your family. They're like, what's, what's dad thinking? What's going on with you? Uh, I don't understand. You're not talking. You're not communicating. I don't know what's going on. What's what's happening here? So it's so important for you to force yourself to talk and to communicate as much as it hurts. 
And if you can't, again,